So in this video I'm going to tell you everything interesting that I know about the drug ibuprofen. So ibuprofen is a drug that's available over the counter all over the world. So it's a drug that most people watching this video will have probably taken at some point in the past or at the very least they will have seen it in supermarket shelves or, or pharmacy shelves or they might have seen it in their parents medicine cabinets etc. Uh, so it's a very very common very famous drug. Um, and it's taken for many different reasons, which we'll go into later, but briefly, it's taken as a painkiller, as an antipyretic, and as an anti-inflammatory. And it is a drug not just that's used over-the-counter by people all over the world, but also a drug that I prescribe not infrequently in the hospital setting as a painkiller medication and also as an antipyretic and as an anti-inflammatory. Before we come on to a further discussion of the reasons and the utility of it, the usefulness of it, um, let's talk about the dose of ibuprofen. Now, I am talking about adult doses here. For paediatric doses, I would always look it up because the dose will vary depending on the age of the child and depending on the weight of the child. Whenever I prescribe anything to a child, full stop, I always get out the paediatric BNF and every single drug that I'm prescribing to them, I look up, I have the child's age, the child's weight, and I work out what dose this child should be taking of that drug, and then I prescribe that exact dose that the pediatric BNF tells me to. I don't know off the top of my head any pediatric doses. However, adult medicine is much simpler. There's one dose fits all in adult medicine, so I do know the adult doses, so we're talking about adult doses here. So, uh, firstly, it's available usually, the most common formulation that you see available is tablets, and each of the tablets contains usually 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. However, there are other formulations available. Capsules are available if you prefer capsules to tablets. And also for children, there is liquid ibuprofen that's available as well because they struggle to swallow tablets and capsules. So the liquid will be nicely flavoured with some sort of sweetener to help make it palatable to the child. Uh, and then doses for adults, the normal dose that we prescribe of ibuprofen is 400 milligrams of ibuprofen three times a day. And that might be on the regular side, i.e. we want them to take it 400 milligrams three times a day every single day whilst we're prescribing it to them. Say that say they're an inpatient in hospital and we're prescribing them ibuprofen. You can prescribe it on the regular side and say you want the nurse to give it three times a day at this dose of 400 milligrams, or it might be on the PRN side, so as an as-required medicine. So if the patient's complaining of pain, the nurse can then go and say, oh, I've got this ibuprofen prescribed, we'll give you that because you're in pain. So they don't give it on the regular side, they just give it when required. However, that is, even though that's the common dose to be prescribed, you can actually prescribe it in much larger doses than that. So the maximum dose of ibuprofen that you can prescribe an adult, and I really would be cautious with this, this is a dose that I would only ever consider prescribing to someone who's a large adult. Like, a, you know, if it's a 30-year-old a, a man who's very muscular and 90 kilograms in body weight, they will handle this dose. Whereas if it's a tiny little old lady who's 50 kilograms of body weight, I would never dream of prescribing her this dose. And we'll actually talk about that later on. This is a drug full stop that you need to be very cautious about prescribing to anyone over the age of 60. And in fact, I very, very rarely ever prescribe it to anyone over the age of 60. But if it is a smaller person, lower body weight, you wouldn't dream of prescribing it at this sort of dose. But the maximum dose you can prescribe it to an adult is 800 milligrams, so four of these tablets up to four times a day, so that the maximum they have in a 24-hour period is going to be 3.2 grams. A dose that I commonly do use, especially if they are a larger adult, would be 600 milligrams three times a day. I don't think I've ever prescribed it at this dose for 800 milligrams four times a day, but be aware that you can do it in doses up to that. So ibuprofen is in a category of drugs called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NZs for short. Often we just refer to them as non-steroidals, also as short. Uh, so the shorthand names that you can use are NZs or non-steroidals. And I have actually just written down some of ibuprofen's brothers. So naproxen is another non-steroidal, and diclofenic, the dreaded diclofenic, is 
um, an even bigger brother. So naproxen, if you like, is the bigger brother of ibuprofen. And then the even bigger brother is diclofenac. So naproxen is viewed as being slightly stronger than ibuprofen. And then diclofenac is even more strong than naproxen. Uh, naproxen is a drug that I do occasionally prescribe, especially for arthritic pains, because non-steroidals, all of them are extremely good painkillers for pain in joints, so arthritic pains. Uh, so osteoarthritis often gets treated with naproxen. Diclofenac is a drug that I would very rarely prescribe and sort of counsel against prescribing. It's a drug that has gone massively out of fashion. It's viewed as being too strong and the risks of it are too high to prescribe, i.e. the risks outweigh the benefit. And we'll talk later about the side effects of ibuprofen and those same side effects are present for all of the non -steroidals. And obviously the stronger non you prescribe, the worse are going to be the side effects. And diclofenac, the side effects, uh, the risk of heart attack, the risk of stroke, the risk of worsening heart failure and renal failure is much, much worse for diclofenac than ibuprofen. So it's really gone out of fashion. Uh, it's a drug you very rarely see prescribed anymore. And I, I don't think I'll probably ever prescribe it to anyone ever again, potentially. It is a drug that I have previously prescribed before I know, knew, before someone told me better that I shouldn't be prescribing that. Um, so, but ibuprofen and naproxen are, are safe drugs and they are routinely prescribed drugs, especially to younger people. So let's now talk about the uses of ibuprofen, or indeed the uses of non steroidals more generally. So these are the three things that they're prescribed for. They're prescribed as painkillers, they're prescribed as antipyretics, and they're prescribed as anti-inflammatories. So let's start and talk briefly about painkiller effect. So they can be prescribed for pain all over the body. As I say, one of the things that they are particularly good for is relieving pain in joints, arthritic pains. So that is one of the places where you massively see uh, painkillers prescribed. Um, when I prescribe them in hospital as a painkiller, um, I work in orthopaedics currently, and so we're treating the pain of broken bones usually, or the pain following surgical fixation of bones. Usually the people I prescribe them to are the young patients. In paediatric patients, I nearly always prescribe ibuprofen, because you want to try and avoid opiates, ideally, in children. Sometimes it's uh, it's necessary and you have to prescribe opiates, but ideally you want to avoid it. So you prescribe them paracetamol and you prescribe them ibuprofen alongside that. And it is a moderately effective painkiller. It's next up on the World Health Organization's ladder for analgesia. So paracetamol is the first line painkiller. If paracetamol alone is not good enough, you're then supposed to add in a non or as long as it's not contraindicated. And the non or most people would add in would be ibuprofen. So you'd have paracetamol and ibuprofen. If that then isn't enough, you then go up to consider opiates. And you're supposed to consider weak opiates such as codeine and tramadol before going on to strong opiates such as morphine or oxycodone. Um, how, having said that, um, ibuprofen, we only generally use it as a painkiller in young patients, so patients under the age of 60. In elderly patients, the risk of giving them ibuprofen will come on to all the side effects, such as stomach problems, uh, kidney, heart, uh, potentially strokes. We'll come on to all of that and discuss that in detail, but those side effects outweighs the benefits. So I would be I would counsel extreme caution in prescribing it to anyone over the age of 60. And indeed, even if the patient's younger and they've got loads of medical conditions, you need to think very carefully about prescribing these drugs. So the patients I generally prescribe ibuprofen to are the ones who have injured themselves. They've got broken bones, they're young, and they don't have any medical conditions. Those are the ones who are perfect candidates for taking ibuprofen. And they're not on any other medicines as well. Um, and it is a moderately effective painkiller. It's stronger usually than paracetamol. Its effect is better than that. It's not as good as the opiates at relieving pain, but it is a good drug. 